coming to you live here at the Heritage Farm Museum in Sterling, Virginia. And I'm about to go into the Waxpool General Store here. First, I want to read this. Want to buy some sugar to bake a cake? Fabric to sew a new dress? The general store offered everything a farm family needed, including a link to the outside world, the postal services, newspapers, and the telephone. The general store created a neighborly feeling in a rural community by providing a place to gather. On winter evenings, friends gathered by the wood burning stove and exchanged news of the day. In the summer, locals enjoyed a cool breeze and an icy soda pop on the porch. So I'm going to come right on in and show you behind the scenes. You see in front of me here is um, bread that is on the weight thing, the weight scale. Then you have the beans, the salt, the coffee, the sugar and the flour in this section here. Had the veggies here. And the uh, cannon drawers on the top shelf here. The history behind the Wax Pool General Store. The Wax Pool General Store and Post Office operated from about 1890 to the early 1940s, owned by S. E. Monday Sr. and his descendants. Family members began working in the store in 1896. In 1903, S. E. Monday Jr. gave up farming because he contracted polio and lost the use of both legs. Walking with crutches or sitting behind a roll top desk situated near a pot belled stove. Monday Jr. purchased goods from companies based all over the country. The owner of a general store served many roles. Monday Jr. was appointed postmaster in 1909 and held that position until his retirement in 1940 when his daughter Tessie Penn took over. Monday Jr. held a license to di dispense patent medicine and sold dozens of home remedies. For the residents of Waxpool, the general store was a meeting place, a central location where people could gather and catch up on news and gossip. The store often remained open until 8 or 9 p.m. just for this purpose. Customers could even get a haircut by Jim, one of the S.E. Monday's sons. The store operated six days a week, but if a customer dropped by on a Sunday, the shopkeeper gladly opened the store. The general store also had the open telephone and wax pool. Wax pool was also a voting percentage, a democratic ballot box, a voting screen, a ballot cards dating back to 1919 were found in the store. Tessie Penn Monday Tillett helped at the store and eventually took over as the full-time operator sometime in the 1930s. Tessie closed the store in the early 1940s because, according to her son Bill, she didn't want to mess with the World War II ration coupons. 
she continued to run the post office from her house across the street. The post office closed for good in 1950 when services were moved to Ercola. There you have it, folks.